Just the idea of saying anything about that we want to do anything by 2050. Um, again, just back to Guy, in other words, um, I'm totally okay to have the theory that Guy McPherson is irresponsible, doesn't know what he's saying, he's crazy, he's off. That's what I'm hoping. But if he's accurate, he's saying very, very strong things about the urgency that even if you thought any part of it was accurate, it would suggest that as a society, we need to be 10 times more urgent than our most urgent possible action. Now, if you think that what he's saying is not accurate, then we could do biz, you know, do whatever, and we could work on solar and wind and everything. But if anyone thinks that what he's saying is even remotely close, then it sounds like we have to change society. It's not enough to say, let's get cars that get 50 miles an hour. It's kind of saying we've got to go way beyond that. So, what, yeah. <laughs> and, <I'm right> here. <laughs> and you're talking about it. Okay. I just wanted to just talking about you behind your back. <laughs> so the interesting thing about climate change, and I, I know Guy has um, a more extreme view of how bad climate change than I have. However, again, I have a more extreme view of climate change than you do, okay, because... Uh, I'm neutral. You're neutral. Oh, dear. Well, that's bad. <sighs> He's definitely gone in 10 years, okay? <laughs> so the key thing is that if you really want to be hard-nosed about it, we can do it through the economics, okay? So the Stern report, so Lord Stern, who basically is a, a world-leading economist, basically wrote the definitive economics of climate change, and then published it. Um, and what he said was, look, if we leave climate change for the next sort of, 10, 20 years, it's going to start to cost us a huge amount. We're talking about 20% of world GDP. Okay, that's one-fifth of every dollar that's raised in the world will have to actually go to trying to actually slow climate change, adapt to climate change. Whereas what he said is, if we do it now, actually it's only going to cost us one or two percent of uh, world GDP. And actually, if you think about it, if we actually do some of the win-win solutions, and actually you get business involved, you get all the renewable business that take over from sort of the oil companies, so they start making money for your pensions. If you start building high-speed railways, which then uh, uh, make a profit from you instead of the actual airlines, guess what? The economy doesn't actually change, and you can still make lots of money, and you still have people who are then happy and safe. So again, it's an e you can use the economics, I hate to do this, um, because they're always wrong. But you can use the economic argument and say, look, it's much cheaper to do it now, to actually fix it now, than to try to cure the problem when it's gone way too far. Yeah, yeah and Steve, I think, you know, I think the big question is, um, you know, is, I do think that culturally, um, as a society, we are changing our approach to this, our acknowledgement of it, um, we're starting to mobilize on some of the adaptation. I just last week I was in Stockholm, Sweden, where they convene the World Water Week every year. And the opening plenary talk was given by the mayor of Stockholm, and she said, and I hadn't heard it before, that Stockholm will be completely fossil fuel free by 2040. So that's you know, pretty far beyond what California is pledging to do. Um, and, and going all the way, you know, all in. We're going to be completely clear of fossil fuel by 2040. Um, so, as more information comes in and as we understand climate science better, I think we are starting to internalize it and behave, change our behaviors, but the big question is, is our rate of change of our, of our behaviors going to be fast enough to keep up with the rate of change of what's going on with the climate and all the associated environmental consequences of that? And I'd also like to add that one of the key things is that some of the changes that we can make have fantastic health implications. So for example, if you get rid of coal power stations, and you put wind turbines up, or you put solar panels up, or you do wave power, suddenly air pollution from that source disappears. If we all move to electric cars, no smog in LA. Suddenly health and people's health 
change markedly. If we again, uh, Richard gave a fantastic talk at the beginning of this conference where he talked about sort of like meat and the huge amount of sort of like energy and fossil fuels that go into producing every kilogram of meat. So again, if we move to a more vegetable based diet, Doctors are ecstatic about this. The uh, health of the nation will increase markedly. You're moving away from a heavy meat diet, which is then a link to colon cancers and things like that. So the medics I work with sounds really strange. Love climate change because it's driving things in the right direction to make people much healthier. So you can end up with cleaner air, cleaner water, and basically a more healthy diet just by dealing with climate change. Oh, and by the way, don't worry, you can still make money out of it because we still need energy, we just want it from a different source. And by the way, we'll also take care of water shortages in a number of places as well. So, you know, just of, of interest is the Central Valley of California, the Colorado River Basin of the Western United States, the Ogallala Aquifer that you hear about, about, you know, in, in, the, in the Midwestern part of the United States, the use of water in each of those places, more than half of it is going to, to, uh, to, to producing animal feed. A couple, of points, a couple of points before we move on. Civilization is a heat engine, period. We know this from the incredibly conservative refereed journal literature. Civilization itself is a heat engine. Solar panels increase the heat. Where do you think solar panels come from? Pixie dust? Takes a tremendous amount of fossil fuels to make solar panels. So civilization is a heat engine and as long as the heat engine is going we're going to continue to heat the planet. And secondly, it was 46 years ago that my parents were saying we need to, we need to change right now. My co-host on, on my radio show on the Progress Radio Network, Mike Sleva, almost every episode says, yeah but if we start right now, and it's a joke, because we need to start right now 50 years ago. And every year has been worse than the year before in those last 50 years with respect to every aspect of the living planet, not with respect to smartphones. <laughs>